Now that, uh, now that the uh, obviously your trade is official, mm -hmm. um, can you just go into uh, the thinking and how that played out? Well, um, first of all, uh, um, I better address Brooke and thank him and, and obviously his family for being part of the Nets family. I mean, I, I think it's been pretty clear what he meant to this franchise over the course of the last nine years. So we'll we'll sorely, um, you know, obviously miss him, uh, miss his presence, you know, around here. Um, but the trade uh, overall, you know, it's 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 about getting a couple of pieces to add to our young core. And when we're talking about, you know, D'Angelo Russell, obviously we know what he's he's done in the league the first couple of years with being 21 years old. Um, and I think he'll be a nice complimentary piece to what we've sort of got, you know, when we've got our young guys here. And obviously with Timofey, he brings you know, a system fit to what Kenny, how Kenny likes to, likes to play. And we look forward to what both those guys will, will be bringing here. What do, you, what do you see as Russell's upside in terms of development uh, because obviously uh, he lost the starting point guard job mm -hmm. out there and they obviously felt that they would rather have Lonzo Ball than him so d do you have any concerns about maturity or, or how he might develop here? You know what I, I've, I've known uh, I've known him for quite some time uh, followed him obviously through his college career and so forth and, and prior to him being drafted so um, I think when you're able to get a talent like that um, in your gym uh, we're excited about that. You know, I mean, Kenny, the other players. I mean, we talked to talked to Jeremy and Karis and Rondé and so forth, and they're excited about getting a, a young player in there with with a lot of upside. So um, I think any time we get Kenny and his coaching staff's hands on somebody, who knows where it goes. But uh, again, I'm I'm not I'm not concerned about um, as you mentioned the maturity and so forth. What I am concerned about is what he brings and what our culture and how we can help develop him. Not as a basketball player, but as a young man. The latter part, um, what you've mentioned in terms of uh, the culture mm -hmm. here, um, which is something you guys talk about mm -hmm. a lot, um, is that what gives you confidence that you can kind of, for lack of a better term, prod the best out of D'Angelo? I mean, the fact that you guys have talked so often about player development mm -hmm. and culture, is that what gives you that kind of confidence? Um, I hope so. I mean, that's one thing. If I look back out over the last year, I'm very, very proud of, of what the entire organization has done. And, that, and that's from, um, from Michael all the way through in terms of player development uh, and, uh, and player care and, and, um, and developing this culture. But I will tell you this, once you start thinking your culture's done, you're finished because your culture should, your culture should always be um, uh, evolving uh, and, and moving with the sign of the times and we're bringing in new guys all the time and we hope that when they come in here to our family um, everybody from myself from Kenny from you name it everybody who touches that person um, will help you know develop that, that, that kid and how, how do you see Lynn and Russell fitting together you know do you feel their talents are complementary will they both be on the ball at times uh, how, how does that gonna work out do you think yeah, I mean, Kenny and I talked about it a little bit. I don't want to go into a great uh, deal of detail. We'll, we'll address that um, in a few days' time, obviously. But um, to have both those guys, I, I think that, that gives us a lot of versatility. You know, we not only we have, you know, Jeremy and, and, and Karis and, um, and now D'Angelo, all that can break, defensive, break defenses down. Um, and, and handle the ball, you know, ability to shoot from outside, and, and they're, they're a threat. So um, we're looking forward to that. Jeremy uh, has, he had said last night, or yesterday, what have you, uh, that he's always been a proponent of having like two combo guards in mm -hmm. one backcourt. Um, and obviously, he had success that way in Charlotte. Um, but I am curious, he also mentioned immediately when this trade happened that he was. He immediately talked to you and Kenny, mm -hmm. um, and that he was quote sharing raw emotion. Mm. Um, did he have to be convinced at all of playing in the backcourt or sharing the ball, sharing the backcourt, sharing some of that no, no, leadership I, role? As no, player? absolutely not. I'm not worried about Jeremy. I mean, he he's a very mature young man, as as you guys all know, and. Um, what he will do to help develop uh, D'Angelo will be terrific. What he, you know, I, I hope that not only D'Angelo but the rest of our guys look to him and and look up to him and look at his work ethic and how he practices and plays um, and treats people and everything else about Jeremy. I mean, 
So I, I'm not worried about um, you know, how they'll get along on the court. I'm sure there'll be growing pains just with the entire roster. As the roster continues to evolve and move and change, uh, we're, we're continuing to have to, uh, you know, again, face these things. But uh, it's all about the people we bring in and the people around them. How, how different a team will this be without having a guy like Brooke in the post that you can throw the ball into whenever you wanted a, a basket? I, I mean, it'll be, it seems like it's going to be very perimeter oriented now. You know, um, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it, how it evolves. But, um, you know, I think we will certainly miss having a, a, a presence like Brooke. And I think you look at how he's developed his game. He wasn't just an inside player. You know, he was obviously uh, playing quite a bit on the perimeter. Um, we'll obviously miss him. There's no question of that. You know, he's one of the, you know, the best uh, big men in the game. So we'll, we'll definitely miss this. But it was a time to, you know. Time to move on. And and you called Mozgov a system fit, and yet you know he's not obviously a, a stretch big man. Uh, how, why do you see him as as a fit? Um, is it more on the defensive. Uh, sure, I mean he is he is definitely um, will be you know more of a rim protector, maybe more of an inside presence. Um, he gives you, um, you know, a very active big running the floor, uh, screen and roll, which will open up things for these these guys out on the perimeter. So um, yeah. He knows his role, and, and we look forward to you know what he can do and help developing these other young guys. When you talked about uh, rim protection, mm -hmm. um, Kenny had mentioned that was one thing that he wanted. He said, obviously, we have to draft best available, but one thing he did want was mm -hmm. rim protection and you know a big that could guard the pick and roll, that sort of thing. Um, was that your mindset going in, and Alan just happened to fall to you, or was or were you saying best available, and he was best available? Uh, well, we went into the draft knowing guys that we wanted to focus on, um, and where we're at in our life cycle, we certainly, you know, taking the best available is definitely something that we had in mind. But I will say this: we're extremely fortunate to get Jared Allen. Um, he's an incredible young man, uh, very versatile, and he is not even remotely scratched the surface of what he can do. If you look at how he's improved through his very short time in Texas. Um, it's exciting for us. It's exciting. He, you know, he's a tremendous young man. Um, fits exactly what we're doing. Uh, you know, I, I know their coach. We know their coach, Shaka Smart, very well. And um, you know, we spend a lot of time with Jared and, and, and Shaka. And uh, you know, we believe in the people that they bring in. And, and Shaka spoke very, very highly of him. So we're excited. Now what? you didn't. You didn't uh, actually. Well, I sh this is not a statement. It's a question. I Yes, he, he said that he didn't meet with you guys until yesterday. yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, is this, do I read anything into it that you move Brooke on? And obviously, you did a lot of scouting. You saw a lot of people. Mm -hmm. You move Brooke Tuesday, and you meet with him. You don't meet with him until Wednesday. Or was that just the way that the schedule worked? I, I think that's a little bit of the way it worked. You know, I mean, we're certainly crammed. Um, for time and so forth, but uh, but again, um, you know, we we've, we interviewed uh, Jared in Chicago. Um, we weren't able to bring him in uh, for a workout, but we did bring him in yesterday, and we spent some time some time with him yesterday. So, so you never worked him out individually here? No, not individually. No. And yet, what made you s still so confident that that was the guy for you? And, and were you surprised that he was there? Uh, we were definitely surprised, uh, as I said before. But again, I think it's this is where we rely on our scouting department. You know, we rely on those guys. We spend a lot of time um, at Texas games, uh, like they do all around the world. And this is a guy we had uh, very high on our board, and I think we're very fortunate uh, to be able to get him. So he was he was much higher on your board than where you took him. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Of the, of the guys that you worked out, do I? That's what I'm saying. Do I presume that basically? Yeah. You didn't work him out because you didn't expect to be able to get him. Is that a fair um, assessment? There was, there was certainly some of that, yep, exactly. And all these guys now, I mean, if you look at the way the timeline is set from the combine and so forth, we're really crammed in here from agent pro days. There's not a lot of time to get guys in, um, and, and agents have a feel for where their guys are going to go, and you're not always able to get guys in. But, uh, again, I said we're, we're very fortunate to have him. We definitely had him higher on our board. And, and what do you project for him uh, in his first year? Is he a guy... Who can make an impact, or does he? Is he still need strength? Is he too young to have a, a significant role early? Well, I think with anybody we would have been able to draft. There's a there's a there's a big 
level of development that's going to be needed. I mean, just from just from a culture shock, coming to college, to the MBA, to the MBA lifestyle, to the travel and so forth. Um, but when you when you start to spend some time with Jared, you realize you know what sort of person he is, and you realize that he'll he'll jump fully into this. Um, obviously, we had him in Brooklyn. He, we were able to talk to him about that and sit him down. Um, on the court wise, there'll there'll definitely be some development there. It, it, all these guys need to develop strength and so forth. But we look forward to having him in our gym and putting him with our performance team and our coaches quickly. What do you see as his strengths? Sorry, what's that? What are the strengths that he brings uh, to this team? Um, he, I think he brings a lot. Number one, the, obviously upside is huge for him. Versatility. Um, we love the way he runs the floor, the way he's, he's a mobile big. He can uh, switch out, guard several positions, switch pick and rolls. Um, again, he fits, I think, this modern NBA that when you're seeing big guys that are versatile can really move, really get up and down. Uh, and run, and I think, again, I said before, he's really just scratched the surface. I think we look forward to really developing his game and extending his game, extending his range, obviously, uh, and spending a lot of time with, again, the performance. You think he can eventually extend his shooting range? Sure, yeah. Okay. And which, one last thing, what should we know about your number two? Where did that, that came out of the blue? <laughs> Oh well, I, that's good. I, I hope I hope a lot of these things come out of the blue. Um, no, we're very excited about having uh, Vizenkov here. So um, again, he's an elite NBA shooter. He has an elite skill. So t to have a guy like that within our program, within our family, um, again, we're excited about what, what he brings. Elite shooter, you say? Yes.